Hello, this is Sabina at Cross Keys Crafts. Today with a birthday card that was inspired by the TV series Outlander. My German bestie is a very big fan of this series, so I thought I should make her an Outlander card. I have gone ahead and um, printed this tartan off. This is actually a photo of the tartan and it's a bit wobbly here. It's very generic, but uh, sorry, very original. Um, as, as it is a photo of the fabric itself but I think that's fine and uh, yeah I've just printed this off I'm okay with this because I, this is a private use I'm not selling this card if you use any photos or clip arts anything from the internet and you want to sell the cards you might have a, co a problem with copyright but I think this one will be fine um I originally had intended to make a 5x7 card, but I printed it off too small. I didn't think about this, so this is going to be a 6x6 card. I have got a card base here. This actually is a slightly smaller. This is a shopboard one. So this panel is actually only 5.5 inches squared. And my idea was, though, to do something with a dragonfly in amber. And I thought I'd do a little shaker card. At first I thought I found this embellishment that I would put this inside the shaker. But it's got a little bit of dimension to it. And I also found I wanted the ember to, to recreate the ember by just using some orange coloured vellum. But when I put this behind it, it almost disappeared. So I decided to actually use a dragonfly stamp. And I had a little trial run today because normally when I stamp on um, vellum, I in the past I've always used stays on and I did this here. With this one, I slipped instantly with the uh, stamp. So that is actually a bit smeared here. This one was very juicy and it was a bit of overlapping here. There was no gap here. Uh, this one was just a second generation from that one. But I also had a trial run with the Versafine, um, the normal one. And after I let it dry, it's fine. It doesn't smear at all. So I think I will actually use this part here. So what I want to do is uh, I want to use this side here. So it's a bit faded rather than having the glossy bit. So it actually looks like it's in the amber. And I want to create a little shaker pouch from this. So, but I will be doing that in a second step. What I want to do on this panel first is outline the window because I want to have a very um, natural looking stone. I had a look on the internet what the one in the film looks like. So I'm just taking my pencil and I'm just thinking because I want to leave some space for the sentiment. I actually should get my die ready first. Bear with me. So I decided to go for this one because this one has got a shadow die with it. Reason being, this is quite busy. If you only have a single die cut on the top, unless you have it in white or one plain color, it can get a bit lost. So if you've got a shadow die and have got something in the background, that can help with it. So I might even put another layer of vellum on this one here. So this gives me an idea now how much space I have. By the way, I will have these stripes going horizontal. So if I imagine this being on the front like this, this gives me now an idea how big I can have the window. I don't want it to be too big. I don't want to get too close to the edge here. But this roughly gives me an idea. And I will just cut this out with my scissors here. So I'm just poking a hole in the middle. If I could find them, I would probably use my nail scissors. But they have gone AWOL. So I'm just moving this round. It's more like a bean shape now, but I think that'll be fine. This amber usually is fairly round. When it gets washed by the sea. Um, and they don't have to go along the lines here because nobody will see them again. So I'm just straightening this out here. I'm just checking from the other side that I'm happy with it. Yeah, that's fine. 
So, the other thing I have done, I want to, because it's a quite a flimsy cardstock, because I had to put this through the um, printer, I think this is 160 GSM. I have, rather than um, laying this with cardstock, I have chosen some foam, that just a normal, normal craft foam, that I can give some stability to this, but also a bit of dimension. You can just cut various layers of cardstock if you want to. You could put some um, foam strips here, but I've mostly used mine up and I found in the past sometimes they came undone and I'm a bit more successful with this. So what I need to do here though now is I also need to cut this window out and I'm even going a bit wider because, so I'm just marking this here, because I need to leave some space for the pouch I'm creating. So I'm going to camera pick that up. So I'm really just going in here now. And there's enough of an edge. I didn't think actually that I shouldn't have gone that close to the bottom there because there's not much space to play around with it there, but never mind. Be a bit careful when I create the pouch. So if I put this behind here now. Mm, I could definitely go around a bit further. Because when I create the pouch, I don't want any of the tape on the side showing. Yeah, that's better. So as I said, I'll have to find a solution for the bottom there. So ideally don't do what I did, but I think this will look lovely. So I've marked, by the way, I've marked with a little V there in the corner, which one is the Versa Mark one. So what I'm going to do now is the amber doesn't have to sit, actually doesn't have to sit straight in there. I think that more naturally would look like this. So I'm just outlining this here with a generous frame here as well to cut this out and I think I'll see if I can find another um, page from this um, vellum here and then I'll show you how to create a pouch. So I just rethought a little bit as I've gone so close to the edge I think I would like to stamp this again and create a pouch here by just folding over um, the bit here. And I can't do this here because of the way I stamped it, unless I had it upside down, but I've already stamped on this side. So I think I will just recreate this and let the um, dragonfly dry a bit again. So I'm just folding this over and... This will give me a nice little pouch. So if I just mark that here, hope you can see what I'm doing. I know what size I need. So the dragonfly by the stamp, uh, by the way, is a stamp from Lavinia Stamps. Let me just find that. I have lost it somewhere. That's the problem when you've got too many projects on the go. So this is from the Fairy Bugs set. But I think Dragonfly is also available as a pound stamp fly. There's also this one that's on the side here. So I'm just going to stamp that quickly again. If I lay this down over here, I've got an idea where about I want to stamp that. So be careful when you stamp on vellum not to slip so don't apply too much pressure so I'm just sorry if I'm going a bit off camera here I'm just inking this up as normal make sure it's properly covered it's got very fine details on the front there and then I can just set this down here and I'm just pressing it down very, very lightly. 
but making sure it's touching everywhere. There we go. So as before, I will now leave this to dry and will not continue with this card until I give it about half an hour when I test it then. I forgot to mention that the vellum is from this paper pad. I bought this in Germany. I don't know which shop it is from, whether it's from TD or Action. So those of you who are in Germany, you might have found the same uh, pattern paper. So there are some printed vellums in there and some plain ones. But I'm sure there are other places in the UK where these are available or wherever you are in the world. So I thought whilst I'm waiting for the vellum to dry, I should die the uh, die cut the um, sentiment. So I've just die cut it from the orange vellum again. I think this will be nice against the background. And at first I thought I'd go for this sort of metallic slate uh, grey, which is nice. I think it's nice for a mail card especially as well. But then I thought if I want to use this embellishment here, this is a bit too harsh with the grey. Pardon me, I had to edit out a cough there. Um, so I had a look in my stash. I don't have any bronze cardstock, but I do have this rose gold cardstock. And I know, and I've done it before, I have coloured before um, metallic cardstock with my alcohol markers. So I'm just getting a selection now of browns and see which one would work best with this brass ornament or embellishment. Okay, so I have actually found a tiny piece of paper from an envelope that would have been perfect, but it's just a wee bit too um, short here because this one might tear off and I don't really want to cut through this. I could otherwise glue this on. That would be a perfect match, but never mind. But I um, had a try run here with the rose gold and I even tried some of my metallic markers on this. Funnily enough, the gold one is actually yellow. Very interesting. But I came to the conclusion rose gold is not the best base. I need a yellow gold. And I've got this sort of mattish one. It's not like, you know, like other gold foiled cardstocks. And if I use this brown here, that's the best match for this. A piece of brass so I'm going to use that now and I'm going to just cover a little bit here and then I think I will also use my marker to add a few specks here on the other side because you can also color vellum if I just do something like this it will make it look a bit more natural as if there are other inclusions maybe just a few specks here I might just go in with the this is just the um, tri-blend marker so I will probably go in just with a few of the darker bits here just make a bit more natural so when I fold this over they will just appear in the background the lighter ones don't even show I might have it this way around. No, I think I'm still going from this one. Not quite sure yet. But yeah, you can also, if you want to, um, use a bit of um, spirit alcohol to dissolve this a little bit and to mix it in. I'll just show you that. I just need to put something underneath. I don't want this to mess up the table. So if you've got alcohol in the spray bottle, and I've shown that before in a video, you can just... Spray this on, I try not to get onto the stamp bit. And it will actually move these bits around. You can also use your finger a bit and move these around. It dissolves the alcohol a little bit. And it's less speckly then. So but again, I need to leave this to dry now. Or you could, if you wanted to, just go in again with another pen. Maybe not this one. Just add a few more specks. Be careful just to clean the pen afterwards. Can you see that? So I'm leaving this to dry. I can always wipe it in a moment, but spirit alcohol usually dries quite quickly. 
and then I will test this one here. But in the meantime, I will colour this here and die cut my sentiment. In the two minutes that it took me to die cut this, uh, this has already dried. And also, it just reminded me, if you don't have this orange coloured vellum, obviously you can create your own. So just use your alcohol markers, as I've just shown you. Use your orange pens and just use some spirit alcohol over this. And then you've got orange coloured um, vellum. So that's easy to do. And this is the die cut piece. And it's a perfect match for this brass element. So that's a really useful tip. And it doesn't rub off anything, you know, it's just fine. It's just alcohol markers. So I'm really pleased with this. And it'll look so much better than this one here. But I keep that for another project. So now we can start assembling this. I want to have um, a few shaker elements in this here. Although I want the dragonfly, and this I think is why I need it on this side. I might just add a few specks actually on this side. Um, so just bear with me. Sorry if I'm changing my mind in the meantime. Um, I just... No, I'll tell you what, I won't do this. I might just use a few of these specks here, but not too many, because I don't want to spray alcohol over the Versa mark. I don't know what will happen there. Sorry, Versa fine. So I'm just adding a few specks, just with the medium colour here. So I probably would have been better if I'd done my own um, vellum, because there would have been some variation in that one. So at least this will show a little bit. So I've got the um, dragonfly on the back here, but on the top layer. And I'm just creating a pouch by sealing the edges off with um, clear tape. So in the past I've done it, you know, the thing where you just put foam tape on either side. I like to create these pouches now. Because at least they're safe, that you know nothing comes out. Um, I I didn't realize until one year my mum gave me back sequins um, whether I could use these in my projects again because the card I'd given her had fallen apart. So I've got this sealed off. I need a little bit more tape there at the bottom, but because I'm not using fine glitter, I think this should be fine. So I hope this is wide enough without showing the tape. Yeah, just about. So make sure it's wide enough and the tape hides behind the cardstock. So what I have found is what I thought about using is these microbeads. But again, there's the risk of this going past. But I've got these little um, sequins. But pardon me whilst I switch this off for another cough. Yeah, I can't tell you how sick and tired I am of my cough now. It's just exhausting me. So I've got these sequins. Don't know where I got them from. They might actually be from the works. They might have been in a set. I don't know. So I just thought I might just use of these. And hopefully, if I test them, yeah, they show in the background. And I think this will be just enough to give it some interest. I don't want to fill it too much. I want to keep this fairly flat. If you look at this, the iridescent, the iridescence of these shows nicely. So when I think I've got enough in there, do I need a few more? Just put a few more in. You can use various colours if you wanted to, but I didn't know which colours would show, show, so I just went for these. So and now I'm sealing this just on the top, making sure it's completely sealed. So I don't want any of these to go out. So just to be on the safe side, just a little piece here. So I can give it a try I want to make sure it's not coming out. So what I need to do now is I need to place this behind uh, the window here now. So I can see where I've got the tape, I can see where my dragonfly is, and I know I need to leave a little bit of space um, at the bottom. I might 
actually um so I've got my cable just got caught there I might actually cut the bottom bit away I think that would be fine but I don't want to go too close to the edge um, because I don't want this to show too much although just in case I will just cut this off here so I'm making sure the dragonfly is in the front so and all I'm doing I'm not messing about with any double-sided tape. I'm just using my clear tape and just stick it down. It's really, really easy. Because this is not, not going anywhere. So, as I said, I think I will just cut this bit out here where I'm getting too close to the edge. Well, I might not have to. Sorry, whilst I'm still fiddling with this. I'm not even sure this is the right way around. Probably this way around. The reason why I cut this away, I don't want to have too much bulk where I've got my pouch, so I think I just need to cut this straight. My original thought was to have an uneven card, but I just want to bulk this up where I haven't got the pouch. So I'm just cutting this straight. Normally, if you haven't watched me before, I'm a bit more organised when I'm creating a card. But sometimes I just delve into this. I've got an idea in my head and then it takes a while to figure it out on the go. So I'm just, I just cut that corner there properly. Then this will fit really nicely. So I'm now going to stick... Uh, red tape onto these areas here to stick this down I find that the best and then I will put another layer of red tape on the top and then this can go on the card base I might put a bit of red tape here where they, I don't have the window maybe a little bit here as well and a small strip at the bottom although this might not catch because I've got these raised bits here now and then I will put this on my card base. I find the biggest challenge of using red tape is to get the release tape, uh, yeah, the release paper off of the release um, strip here when using foam because it wants to adhere to the strip more than it wants to the foam. So make sure you press it all down. And I like to come in from the side that the recipient can't see. So if you do mess it up, it's definitely hidden and then I'm just using this you can use any pokey tool and then I can actually lift it off like this um, I've also put a little strip just here at the bottom just to keep this in place there so again oops just pressing this down here firmly coming in from this side just getting in between so even if I lift it off a little bit I'm not causing too much damage and when I have grabbed it I'm keeping the strip down with that. So this is ready to go now onto my card base. Obviously with the red tape you've only got one chance to place this down. So I'm going to just hover this over the top and I've left enough edge on either side because I find that that is the easiest way of placing it if you've got exact measurements makes it much more difficult but this is fine now so I'm pressing it down and one thing I did not consider don't do what I did I should have put some glue underneath here just um, to keep these bits down here because it is too wobbly around that why didn't I think of that so one thing you can one way you can remedy that is to put some glue on some cardstock i'll show you that in a moment and basically go all the way around and do it underneath sometimes my brain just does not work so i'm using my collal quick grab glue and where i can lift this up i can just put it underneath i might get away with that if you have smaller areas where 
you can't get underneath. Pop a bit on the edge of some cardstock and then just slide it underneath like that. Lift it up and then you can sort of grab that glue. But I think with this one here, I get away with applying it like this. I can't see whether I've pressed out any glue, but I'm just hoping that my glue bottle is cooperative. Got a bit of dry glue there now. Problem is with vellum, it'll show where you uh, have accidentally smeared a bit of glue, but should have thought about this before, so I'll put a disclaimer in the video. Maybe it's brain fog connected to my um, cold. Got a bit of excess there. Let's see if I can get rid of that with my glue eraser. Yeah, that's coming off nicely. So, yeah, that is so much better now. So, yeah, there I've got my dragonfly in amber. So all I need to do now is to place the sentiment on the vellum. I will also do that with the collal glue. And then I will um, glue the sentiment down by putting glue just behind the sentiment there, not onto the exposed vellum parts. And I will offset this a little bit. And then I can put the other dragonfly up here um, with just a bit of red tape. There is a bit of residue from another project. I'll see if I can take that off beforehand. So here it is, my Outlander inspired dragonfly in amber card. Fairly easy to make unless you faff around like I do and don't think bits through. So as I said, I will put some disclaimers in here. In the end, I decided to put the sentiment in the middle and put this little dra dragonfly here at the bottom. And I just put two very tiny foam strips in the back because these um, wings were a bit hollow and they weren't holding the red tape that well. But yeah, I think this is really cool with the shaker cart here at the bottom. And I'm sure my German bestie will appreciate this. If you like this card too, you might want to give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of what I'm creating, you might want to subscribe to my channel. I'd be very happy about that. And I'll see you soon with another video.